Welcome back to Enshrouded. Today I'm showing you how to build a steep roof, just like the ones you see on these small medieval houses behind me. And these are part of my big willow tree house village. And I do have a tour video of this build linked in the description for those who are interested. But without further ado, let's jump into the tutorial. So I've gone ahead and built a simple box here, basically just mimicking a house to show you how to build the roof. And the house can be any size as long as it's an even number of blocks wide, just to be sure that the top of the roof lines up correctly. And you could do this uh, roof out of any type of block or roof block, but my personal favorites are the plant fiber roof block, the straw roof block, and the stone shingle roof block. The reason for this, and I put together a little demonstration over here to explain it, is you can see with the plant fiber, the straw, and the shingle, we kind of get the same texture going all the way down. Whereas like with the clay roof block here, uh, or other types of roof blocks, you'll see this big gap in the middle. It doesn't feel quite as smooth as these ones do. It just breaks it up. The textures don't mesh together as well. So that's the reason for using these because, uh, yeah, the big reason for this is like as you stack them, you can see that the side of them is the same texture as the top. Whereas you can see like if I take the, uh, the roof tiles block here and I stack it, you can see the top is a totally different type of block than the rest of it. The side is like a wood texture. And technically, the stone shingle roof block here has a wood texture on the side, but it overlaps enough to cover that ugly looking gap that we see here in the roof tiles block. So that's the reason for picking these block pallets. Uh, the ones you saw in the medieval houses over there were out of this straw block here. But for this tutorial, I'll do it out of the uh, plant fiber roof block here, just so you can see the difference and how it looks. So with that said, let's get up to our, basically the final level of what our house would be. And I'm going to show you how to do the outline first, just out of a generic block. We'll just be using the stone block for this demonstration, just so that it's easier to see, because sometimes dealing with all the angles on the roof block, it's a little harder to see and visualize when you're first getting the first row of the steep roof put on. So I'm going to show you how to build this little outline on this side here. And we're basically going to first start by coming out by two blocks. This is going to be our side roof overhang. And you could do this any size you want. The reason I'm coming out two blocks up one and then starting the pattern, you can see this is like a consistent pattern, but it gets a little weird here at the bottom. The reason it gets a little weird at the bottom is because it'll create this really cool flare out on the roof, which just looks super cool as a roof overhang. So this is just the personal way that I like to do it. So once we have two blocks overhang there, we'll just come up with one and then across, up two, across, and then up two, and just continue this pattern all the way up to the top. And it's really helpful here if we take the blueprints, just go to like a little ceiling piece, and we can just put one like up here, and one up here, and then maybe one like kind of right down in the middle here. Um, we can just turn X off for this. And this way you have yourself some scaffolding to, uh, to work with. So, again, there, that was up two there, so we'll go across one, up two, across one, up two, and then over one, up two, and then again we can just hop right over to this one, uh, to go over one, and then up two, over one, up two, and as we get really high up here, I could kind of jump on, onto this one, uh, but then you can see, yeah, over one, up two, and same thing, up two over one right there. And then they will both meet in the center, essentially. And what we're gonna do now is, as you can see on this side, what I'm doing is destroying the blocks that we don't need. So these were just to be able to place the next block, but I don't need them to be here, so I can destroy them all the way to the bottom, just so it gives us more uh, headroom inside of the roof. So once we have that outline done, and again, here's what it looks like from the front. You could even just do the roof out of stone or any generic block. You don't have to use a roof tiles block. It's just going to look a lot smoother and nicer if you do. So once we do have that, we can go ahead and take the plant fiber roof block in my case, and essentially just uh, place a block on every back side of this pattern here. So go one, two, up one, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, all the way up to the top. 
And with the very top here, um, I think we're just gonna go ahead and do like, just come across all the way. Yeah, just like that. So don't bother with these very top two blocks unless you do want like some other cool roof ridge line or something. But we'll just come straight across because of the fact that it creates this nice little roof beam there. So yeah, the very top, you can go ahead and destroy the very top two blocks. And then just continue down the other side. So one, two, one, two. Until we reach the bottom. And there we go. So that's how it should be looking. And you can see here at that, yeah, that looks really cool. It just has this nice smooth slope to it. And then the very edge here, it kind of comes down and then flares out there, which is really cool because this piece is just 45 degrees instead of uh, being twice as steep here. So yeah, it comes from being really steep to then flaring out at 45 degrees, which just looks really cool as a little overhang there. So now that we have that first row done, all we have to do is just continue that all the way back to the back of the house, essentially. So again, I'll just do one, two, and then I know it was up one, and then one, two, and sometimes I like to work from the top down, so like the upper of the two, or you could go bottom down, but when you're standing at a low point, it's easier to kind of aim for the top here. And then same thing here, here, and then down, down. And yeah, this gets a little tricky, so just take your time with it. Go slow, because uh, we don't want anything to be out of place, and that's again why we use the normal stone blocks to create our first little framework, just so that you could get like a little practice run, it's just a little easier. And then again on the sides, one, two, right there. And if you're ever worried, just constantly keep checking the outside and also keep checking the inside here. That it's all uniform with each other and there's not like an extra block sticking out like that. Um, so yeah, just making sure that it stays uniform on the inside and outside all the way back as you work your way down. So again, I'll go out one, two, and then up one, and then one, two, one, two, one, two. One, two, and you sort of just start getting the hang of, of, uh, where to aim. It almost gets in the muscle memory with the mouse as you do it a whole bunch. <laughs> and then, yep, just continuing the top over by that. Oops, and I see I placed one in the wrong spot there, so I can just hit Y to undo that. And right down to the bottom here. So there we go. The roof is now looking pretty nice inside and out. Uh, you can see here now that our scaffolding is starting to get in the way. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete it, and we can do the same thing, but just keep moving it back if we have to. But if your roof is small like this one, you can pretty much get the whole thing now just by standing on the floor of the of the build. And this is, uh, just to give you a reference of this blueprint, this is just two of these uh, larger ceiling pieces wide. It's basically two flame altars wide, so pretty small, uh, but plenty good size for a loft there. And once you've got a few rows done there, we can uh, go ahead and destroy this uh, this front row here of the stone. And we're just going to replace that with the roof blocks. So there we go, I've destroyed the little stone outline here. And then for this front section, we could just go ahead and temporarily place a couple of these, uh, couple of these little platforms out here. Just to be able to do the roof overhang. So what I want to do is come basically one block past the edge of the build. So you can see now we're getting to the very edge of the build. And let's see there. One, two, so yeah, I'll just continue this out basically by two more rows. Um, and then, you know, right now we're at the very edge of where the house is. And then I'm going to want it to overlap the house by one block. So just like this essentially. And we'll just continue this whole thing out by two rows to where the whole thing's like that. So there we go. We are now one block past the edge of the house as a little overhang. And on the very outside here, you can see that that, uh, that roof peak is looking pretty nice. But I like to add two little blocks down. So I'll just go ahead and add one there and one there. And it just fills in that top section just a little more and makes it look a little more sturdy and nice looking on the very outside. You could do it all the way down just to cover that little roof beam. Again, I'm just adding a block there, a block there on the very outside. Uh, so now that that's complete, we're going to go ahead and build up some more scaffolding. 
and we're gonna do a very finished beautiful roof ridge uh, look to the very outsides just a nice trim look so I'm gonna go ahead and place a scaffolding piece there there and then we could go ahead and uh, just place one here so that we can easily get up to it and double jump does make this a little easier so if you do have double jump that's definitely a nice thing to have and then let's see I'm gonna put one right up right up there by the roof peak to get this started so now for the very outside trim here uh, something that you know you could leave it as is but something that I found looks really good again that's what I did on my other little roofs there um, is that I would take the tar shingle roof block here because it creates this beautiful wood carving effect and I would run it all the way down the side. So I'm placing two tarred shingle roof blocks on the very tops of these two roof blocks that were previously the roof peak. Then I'll get down on my next scaffolding. And in every, like, every other one, I'm going ahead and placing one of these tarred uh, shingle roof blocks here. And look at that. It just creates this insanely beautiful trim. So while I'm up here, I'll go ahead and just start bringing it down on this side as well. So not the very top block, but one down from the very top. I'm going to go place one, and then two down from that, two down from that, two down from that. And you can see it just starts snapping in. You should have it looking something like this. Uh, and if you don't, then you know you're doing something wrong. So we can go ahead and just bring that down to there. Not to the very bottom, but to the one up from the bottom. So again, one right there. And oh, you can see that one didn't snap in right. So I'll go ahead and hit Y, and that one also didn't snap in right. I'm just making sure, there we go, that's creating the pattern that we want. And if you're not seeing uh, this nice wooden pattern here, then you have your voxel details turned off. So just be sure those are on so that you can see the nice little wood carving pattern there. And there we go. Now it is looking like a beautiful little roof peak there, and we can go ahead and destroy all of our little scaffolding blueprints here. That is looking awesome. And yeah, one of the sides is going to be those carvings. One of the sides is going to have like slightly different look. That's just the way that the voxels mesh together. But especially when you start looking at it from farther, it does look very nice. Gives sort of this beautiful little fantasy carving feel to the end there. So that's essentially how you do the roof peak there and the trim. And then like I said, you can just continue this all the way back to the other side. And then on the very edge of the other side, you could go ahead with the trim. You can do jut outs off the roof with the 45 degree or steep roofed and things. Uh, it's just a matter of playing around and getting really creative with everything. But it definitely looks really good. And then uh, I'll, I will just go ahead and demonstrate since this is a full tutorial. Um, just how to fill in a little front piece here because uh, the type of block you use can be important in how this front is going to look. So the big thing to pay attention to when choosing blocks to fill in the front wall here of your loft is to choose ones that don't get all jaggedy. So you can see here like the refined wood block and stuff, they get all jaggedy and create this like harsh looking texture. Whereas if we just pick a simple uh, flint stone or stone block with more of this rounded texture, uh, it'll look a lot nicer because you can see like if we start stacking up in the very front with these uh, with these wood blocks here, uh, that jaggedy texture will poke through the side of our roof. You can see we can see it sticking out here, which is totally fine. It really doesn't look bad, especially with this plant fiber roof block because they're both about the same color. But, uh, but it's just not quite as clean looking, so that's why I prefer... Uh, to use the stone ones. So something that I could do though that I did on the other medieval houses because sometimes when you do the whole upper level in stone as a wall it just looks really heavy because you know the base is stone and we don't want it to look like it's top heavy. Uh, so what I'll like to do is just take like the rough flint stone and just do like a neat little trim around the edges here. Uh, I don't know maybe something like that and just kind of continue outlining all the way up to the top here. And the flintstone is what's touching the uh, the roof pieces. And then what that's going to do is make it so that you can see here that doesn't poke through on the edge. It keeps it nice and, uh, nice and clean looking. So I'll just go ahead and kind of continue filling in around here. Just block by block being careful around the edges. 
And once we have it trimmed out, I don't know, something like that. We're missing one right there. Then we could go ahead and either take blueprints and fill in bigger chunks of it. Or, at this stage, it's, uh, it can look nice to then take your wall blueprints and fill in with the refined wood block or the wall block of your choice. And this will just keep things looking really nice and not too heavy or anything. So, something like that, we could then take like the little column blueprint uh, here and then fill it in with the, the flint stone. So, like that. You can see that just starts looking really cool and uh, adds some texture to the roof line. And you could just bring these, uh, these flintstone pieces all the way down so you don't have this like stepped up look. Uh, and then within that wood there is where we can create our, uh, our little windows. So for the windows, I'll just tank the little 2x2 two two wall blocks and then up two blocks from the bottom. Um, and just create that. We could even stack two on top of each other, put a couple of them side by side. Uh, that kind of a thing. And then you can just do the nice little window trim. I've got a video linked below of uh, how to build better windows with some cool little window trim designs if you all want to be inspired by some of that. But yeah, just picking some block combinations that go really well with each other and look nice. And, uh, and it's totally fine to have it stick through the outside of the roof, but I just like to kind of do the outline or at least the parts that touch the roof out of a stone or something that doesn't stick through. Yeah, with that said, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, I figured it'd be fun to do a little in-depth video on this because I will be doing some tutorials in the future for building medieval houses and things, and I'll be using this technique a lot. So with that said, huge shout out to all of my channel members. Do be sure to join the Discord server through the link in the description. Don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.